Imagine knowing where your children are, but not being able to bring them home. Dennis Burns knows that too well. His two daughters were taken to Argentina by his ex-wife, and that was more than three years ago. The Colorado man has battled to get them back ever since. He sat down with CNN's Ana Cabrera for an exclusive interview about his ordeal. She's joining us live from Denver this morning. Good morning, Ana. Good morning, Kate. This really is a heart-wrenching situation. If you are a parent, you can relate to the pain Dennis Burns has endured, able to hug and to hold his daughters only a handful of times in the past three years. Now, he was given primary custody of his daughters here in the U.S., but he finds himself fighting an international legal battle to bring them home. It's a fight that he believes could set a precedent for hundreds of other American parents in a similar situation. For Dennis Burns, the faces of his daughters bring him both joy and heartbreak. And this is Sophia's first trip to Ocean Beach ever. He spent the last three years missing out on the everyday activities that most parents take for granted. Three years of no Christmases or special occasions with Sophia, now four, and Victoria, who just turned seven. Yay! There's times when I want to think about them, but it hurts too much to think about them. And there's things that I need to do to survive in this, this marathon of a situation that I'm in. Burns was once happily married to the girl's mother, Anna Alianelli, who's originally from Argentina. But after five years, the relationship soured. They went through a contentious divorce and a 13-month custody battle. Alianelli alleged abuse. She wanted to move to Argentina with the children. Those allegations were unfounded, and a Colorado judge declared Burns the primary residential parent, ordering the children to live here in Colorado. It must have felt victorious for you to, to get that judge's ruling. It was one of the happiest days of my life. And I was like, I'm going to be able to spend time with my daughters finally and live with them. And, be able to teach them things and show them things and, and raise my, my kids here in Colorado. That's all I ever wanted. Sophia! Ah, it is Victoria! But just three weeks later, in September 2010, his girls were gone, taken by their mom to Buenos Aires. They've been there ever since. There are currently thousands of similar unresolved international custody cases where a parent has abducted their own children. The State Department receives about 1,200 new cases each year, children from the U.S. taken to countries all around the world. Now, to see his daughters, Burns must travel to Buenos Aires at his own expense. When the girls were first taken, it was 17 months before his ex-wife allowed him to visit. So describe for me what it was like to see your daughters after that 17 months of separation. That was a beautiful day. I saw, first saw Victoria get out of the car and she saw me and she screamed, Papa, Papa, and she came running across the parking lot and jumped into my arms. It was just, it was, it was wonderful, you know. I just hugged her so much and it was, it was a beautiful moment. Argentina is one of more than 80 countries to sign the Hague Abduction Treaty, meant to resolve these cases in as little as six weeks. But that rarely happens. When a child is ripped from their home environment, from their friends, their families, they begin to identify with their abductor. So now the psychological trauma to the children starts on that slippery slope where it's very, very difficult now to pull them back from being so aligned with the abductor. Burns invited CNN to go with him on a recent visit with his daughters, but asked that we stay in the car. Here you can see Victoria and Sophia excitedly opening the gifts he brought them. A few minutes later, Ali and Ellie and several lawyers interrupt, serving Burns and his attorney with charges of violence against women and children without providing specifics. It's a known tactic in cases like this to create more legal barriers. The result, the visit cut short. And when they saw our crew, no, 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 we didn't, no, don't touch. No, no. no. Ali and Ellie's lawyer swatted away our camera. We left quickly, catching a glimpse of Victoria and Sophia in tears. My visit with my girls now was a total of about maybe five minutes, ten minutes, and all of a sudden the ambush came out. 
CNN reached out to Ali Anelli and her attorney to hear their side of the story. They didn't want to talk. Instead, we got a statement in Spanish that translates to Miss Ali Anelli does not wish to make a comment with respect to the case. Now Burns remains in legal limbo. There's no question the children were abducted. Courts in the U.S. and Argentina have confirmed that. But the girl's mother has appealed the latest ruling in Argentina, and now the Supreme Court in Buenos Aires has to weigh in. No, I haven't been able to see my, my daughters again in over a month. You know, it's just, it's cruel. It's, it's just cruel and, and just not fair. It's not fair to them or my family. It's just not fair at all. The financial strain forced him into bankruptcy. His home foreclosed, now living in a small one-bedroom apartment where every corner provides priceless memories of Burns' daughters to help fuel his fight, even their tiny coats left hanging by the door. It just makes me feel their presence. It's Burns does have support. He's working with David shirt. Goldman, who's been Not in Burns' shoes. You may remember Goldman's story that drew international attention. It took him five and a half years to get his son Sean returned from Brazil. He has since started a foundation and made it his mission to help other parents going through this. His life with Sean today gives Burns hope. He's thriving. He's uh, playing lacrosse. He's playing basketball on the travel team. He's five foot nine. He just turned 13. He's five foot nine. For now, there are still no school pictures or days of being a soccer dad for Burns. Until the Buenos Aires Supreme Court hears his case, all he can do is wait. I don't have the opportunity with them to get them out of bed in the morning, make them breakfast, take them to school, help them with their homework, help them tie their shoes, help them brush their teeth. I just want to be able to, to know that they're there every day and to be able to, to just hug them and love them. So a big issue in cases like this is there's a huge disconnect, a gap in the different countries' legal systems. U.S. law doesn't apply in Argentina, so a U.S. judge, for example, can't order the girls to be returned. Really, all Burns can do is wait out the appellate process, Kate. It's a heartbreaking story to be sure, Anna. Is there any timetable when the Buenos Aires Supreme Court is going to hear his case, is going to decide and what that means? Unfortunately, no, there is no timetable. You know, one of the reasons that this is taking so long, we believe, is because there's a huge backlog of cases, and so really Burns has to wait his turn. But David Goldman, he is trying to get a bill passed in Congress right now to apply more pressure on countries like Argentina that are part of this Hague abduction treaty to really follow through on their end of the deal in a timely fashion. Kate?